Imagine you're walking outside and you see railway tracks ahead. If you look towards the horizon, it looks like the parallel railway tracks will eventually meet at a single point. But in reality, when you continue walking along the railway tracks, you will never reach the single point and never see the tracks converge. This is a small analogy that shows one of the differences between Euclidean geometry and projective geometry. In addition to studying angles and distance, Euclidean geometry also takes into account that parallel lines will never intersect. Projective geometry is not concerned about parallelism because all pairs of lines will intersect even at the point at infinity. What makes projective geometry so interesting is that it focuses more on the preservation of geometric properties under projection. Common applications of projective geometry are found in architecture and perspective art. The main principles artists follow in perspective art are a straight line in perspective remains straight, parallel lines converge at a single point known as the vanishing point, or in mathematics, we call this a point at infinity. Two of the important theorems found in projected geometry are the Pappus theorem and the Desires theorem. The Pappus theorem states, suppose we have points A, B, and C on the line L and the points A prime, B prime, and C prime on the line L prime. If the line A prime B meet the line A B prime at point X and the line A prime C meet the line A C prime at point Y and lastly the line B C prime meet the line B prime C at point Z then the three points X Y and Z are collinear. Please refer to the extended abstract for the proof about the Pappus theorem. The Desires theorem states suppose we have the triangle A B, C, and the triangle A prime, B prime, C prime are in perspective from the point P. If the corresponding sides of each triangle intersect, like the line A, C meet the line A prime, C prime at point X, the line B, C meet the line B prime, C prime at point Y, and lastly the line B, A meet the line B prime, A prime at point Z, then the three points of intersection x, y, and z are collinear. Let's prove the Desires theorem. We're going to use the Menelaus theorem in our proof. Please refer to the definition in the extended abstract. Notice that the points x, c prime, and a prime on the sides of the triangle a, c, p are collinear. So by the Menelaus theorem, the sine ratio of point x on the line a, c times the sine ratio of the point C prime on the line CP times the sine ratio of the point A prime on the line PA will equal to negative one. Similarly, the points Y, C prime, and B prime on the sides of the triangle C, B, P are collinear. So by the Menelaus theorem, the following expression of the sine ratio holds true. And lastly, the points Z, A prime, and B prime on the sides of the triangle B, A, P are collinear, so by the Menelaus theorem, the following expression of the sine ratio holds true. We first multiply these three expressions together. On the left hand side, it equals to this, and on the right hand side, it equals to negative 1. So we are left with the sine ratio of point X on the line A, C times the sine ratio of point Y on the line C, B times the sine ratio of point Z on the line BA will equal to negative one. Then by the Menelaus theorem, the points X, Y, and Z are collinear. The Pappus theorem was discovered about 320 AD and the Desires theorem was discovered in 1600s. But is there any relation between the Pappus theorem and the Desires theorem? The answer is yes. An interesting fact is that the Pappus theorem implies the Desires theorem. Suppose the triangle ABC and the triangle A prime B prime C prime are in perspective from the point P. Also suppose the corresponding sides of each triangle intersect. So the line A prime B prime meet the line AB at point X, the line BC meet the line B prime C prime at point Y, 
and the line A prime C prime meet the line AC at point Z. We want to prove that the points X, Y, and Z are collinear by using the Pappus theorem. Note that I hide some points and lines from our diagram to have a better visual. For now, we're going to focus on the line that joins points P, B, and B prime, and another line that joins the points A, D, and C. Notice that the line C, B meet the line P, D at point U, and the line B, A meet the line B prime D at point X, and lastly, the line PA meet the line C, B prime at point W. Then by the Pappus theorem, the points U, X, and W are collinear. You might be thinking, why can we use the Pappus theorem when it looks nothing like the diagram on the left? Actually, both diagrams are the same. The reason is that projected geometry is not concerned about distances, angles, and parallelism, so it introduces duality, where we simply interchange a few lines and points. Observe in our original diagram, we have a total of nine lines and nine points, where three points on each line and three lines intersecting each point. We have the same property in the configuration on the right. Therefore, the dual of the Pappus theorem is the same diagram, but is not easily recognizable. Going back to our proof, we're now going to focus on the lines that join points A prime, D, and B prime, and another line to join the points P, C prime, and C. Notice that the line P, A prime meet C, B prime at point W. The line P, D meet the line C prime, B prime at point V. And lastly, the line A prime, C prime meet D, C at point Z. By the Pappus theorem, the points W, V, and Z are collinear. Lastly, we're going to focus on the line that join the points U, D, and V, and another line that join the points W, B prime, and C. Previously, we have proved U, X, W are collinear, so we can conclude that the line U, W meet the line B prime, D at point X. Also, we proved previously that W, V, and Z are collinear, so we can conclude that the line W, V meet the line D, C at point Z. And lastly, the line C, U meet the line V, B prime at point Y. So by the Pappus theorem, the points X, Y, and Z are collinear. Here is the whole diagram from the proof which includes all the points and lines. To summarize, we use the Pappus theorem to prove U, X, W, and W, V, Z are collinear. This helps us prove the three points of intersection, X, Y, and Z, where the corresponding sides of each triangle intersect, which defines the Desire's theorem. Overall, we have proven if the Pappus theorem holds true, then the Desire theorem will hold true as well. I hope this video gives you motivation to explore other theorems in projected geometry, which is an interesting branch of mathematics that challenges the traditional properties of geometry. Please refer to the references I used for this presentation in the extended abstract. Thanks for listening!